What's up everybody, it's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing, back with a special edition of Five Flies. As always, joined by Alec Gerbeck from Umpqua, Feather Merchants. Appreciate Alec making the journey through the last four episodes, or the last three episodes into the fourth. Anytime, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, we've been, talk we're, we've been talking about saltwater fish. This edition we're talking about... The Silver King. Tarpon. Tarpon. <laughs> Sabalo! Hey guys, it's Ivan with another interruption of uh, the special edition of Five Flies. Uh, so obviously, 2020 travel didn't really mix, especially when we were scheduled to release this tarpon video. Uh, but I wanted to get this out for you guys uh, for posterity. So you have a full, uh, the full selection, the full array of saltwater flies, saltwater fish uh, covered in this series. So uh, check it out. Obviously, Alec and I didn't make the, have the travel that we're about to talk about uh, here shortly. Uh, it was a bit of a bummer, but uh, that will happen soon enough. So uh, stay tuned to the uh, YouTube channel, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Dude, I love tarpon. I have hooked one big one, or medium-sized one, and I think it's the coolest fish around. I would agree with you. What, I get why asked do you all like the time, what, what's your favorite saltwater fish? It's hard to admit what your favorite one is. Yeah. So. It's like choosing a child. Exactly. Right. They're all great. Right. Um, I think what's so special about a tarpon is the wow factor when they actually appear and you see them. Um, right. Or just him or her, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whether it's a single or a bunch, it's pretty impressive to see. And then you're presenting a fly to a fish that looks like it should be super aggressive, but it's much more like a chess game, almost like permit fishing. It's very delicate. Yeah. And it might come until, all the way to the boat, and then all of a sudden it eats and it's back to the most aggressive <laughs> jumping fish you've ever right, had. So. Right. I think in Cuba I, I jumped one and it maybe, I don't know, in my head it lasted like four, 45 seconds, it probably lasted five seconds. Probably the best five seconds since high school. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't wait for that again. Yes. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Just, it was cool. If you haven't done it, I suggest doing it. I'm gonna be doing more of it. I know you're I, gonna be doing more of it. I will be doing Do you have more trips? Well. Trips planned this year? Uh, yes, I'll be probably uh, targeting them when I'm down in Belize this year. Yeah. I'm hoping to sneak down to Florida for the migration as well. Cool, nice. So yeah, you can catch them throughout. So yep. again, you're looking Mexico, Belize, you know, Cuba, Gulf of Mexico, Gulf, yeah. period. Right, uh, right. Also, Texas, you can find them. You can well. find them in Texas. You can find them on the East Coast, so over the Carolinas. Yeah. They're now catching them in Western Africa as well. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's all that. That was nuts. Yeah. Can't believe it. So we're talking tarpon, talking tarpon flies. Bow to the king. Let's start it off. Fly number one. All right. Fly number one is the uh, classics of all the classics, the Tarpon Toad in Chartreuse. Shout out to Lefty Cray, rest in peace. If it ain't Chartreuse, it ain't no use. Isn't that something like that? <laughs> yeah. Did I, did I nail it? Did I nail it? I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> to so, Tarpon Toad, Alec, why is this a staple? So yeah, Tarpon Toad, uh, this is a Gary Merriman fly, tied in a couple different versions of marabou tail, rabbit tail, big, small, different colors. Anyway, what's nice about the tarpon toad is it is going to be a slow descent. So it's going to keep your fly in that column a little bit longer. Yeah. They prefer to feed up as opposed to feeding down. Now this color I like for kind of middle of the day in clear water. It's yeah. a little less abrasive than your kind of classic black and purples, things like that. But yeah, it's gonna have a, a slow descent and lots of movement. So as you're, you know, jiggering your fly or sliding your fly, it's gonna do everything you need it to do. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned blurple. Would you fish blurple, dirty water? The same sort of idea we were talking about. Right? Dirty water or early, early low in the morning. Yeah, low sun. Exactly. Cool. Now that being said, you might find a fish in the middle of the day that still wants to eat blurple. But look, yeah. I like those fish. I also like fish like marabou. I'm a huge marabou fan. I, I think I like I get lost in the the strands. <laughs> so any fish that likes marabou, I'm a fan of. Uh, the tarpon toad, fly number one for tarpon. Fly number two for tarpon, the tarpon tapas. Why? <laughs> why do they eat things that are so small when they are so big? 
So this is by Uncle's very own David student. Um, this fly is definitely more geared towards the keys fish. So you okay. can see very small profile. Again, in that kind of tan and chartreuse, lending to more clear water. Yeah. Um, those fish see a lot of flies, yeah. um, and a lot of their food is pretty small. You know, whether it's the worms or the shrimp or whatever, right. it's really that size. So they're scaling down hook size and all that fun stuff. So again, it just kind of stays higher in the column. Yeah. That's something that's with, uh, you, know, you mentioned keys fish, do you change your presentation for the fishery uh, or is the presentation pretty you know, similar throughout? Are you, are you long strips, short strips? What's your what's your go-to presentation and does it change? Uh, sure, it definitely changes. Again, just how the fish are behaving, whether they're laid up, they're rolling, they're cruising. Yeah. That's really gonna dictate how I present my fly to them. So, I mean, let's say you have a group or a chain of fish stroll, strolling through towards you in the front of the boat. Uh, yeah, you're gonna now present your After fly. I poop my pants. After you Then I present the fly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And again, uh, the whole idea is crossing that fish. Yeah. So you're gonna cast past the fish and in some way, shape or form, bringing it away from them as opposed to towards them. Right. Um, and then just sliding the fly, keeping the fly in the zone and very much a listen to your guide. He knows the fish or he knows what those fish kind of like. So yeah. whether it's little ticks or slides or jitters, right. things like that. I've so. seen people do like the single hand or the double hand like underneath. Yeah, like style. some people call it a roly poly, things like yeah. that. Uh, often fish with a worm, just so you get that constant swim. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So yeah, uh, it really depends on how the fish are behaving or maybe what they're feeding on. And I've heard that you're definitely supposed to uh, trout set with trout. Oh, big time, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that goes really well. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't battle them. Also something I've heard. You always battle to the Silver King. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> so there we go. Fly number two, the Tarpon Tapas. Fly number three is the Everglades Gurgler, a surface fly. Tarpon eats surface flies. That's cool. What? about the gurgler style flies is so effective. Why, why, why are they, they seem to be a constant or a consistent thing throughout that, that realm. So yeah, it's in its name Everglades Gurgler. Uh, Everglades is a really popular place to find fish in the back country that are often following around shrimp when they hatch, they're often like popping on the surface and they're uh, making these little noises. Um, and so it's it's essentially sort of like a popper, but it's a lot less abrasive. So gotcha. it's just little pops to make it push a little water, a gotcha. little sound. Um, but again, this is going to actually kind of cross over to other stuff too. You could very well catch a snook while you're tarpon fishing, things yeah. like that. But uh, yeah. so this is more of a blind casting sort of uh, blind fishing. You're fishing maybe likely areas with a gurgler, or would you fish a gurgler sight fishing? Uh, Pursue. Probably not tight fishing. Yeah. It's more of a searching tool. Right. Um, again, mostly in the backcountry for me, maybe looking for smaller fish or fish that are rolling and then going away. Yeah. Just trying to grab their attention any way I can gotcha. without having to go with an intermediate line or a heavy fly or something gotcha. like that. So. Gotcha. Uh, when you hook a fish, what do you do? Tell tell me, this is a, for personal records. Yes. What, what do you do? So, I mean, a uh, uh, tarpon eat is very aggressive, right? You see that big mouth, right. vacuum, all that fun stuff. Right. Uh, probably one of the most important things to start with is not immediately setting the hook. He eats you go like this, you're probably not gonna get a hook set. Yeah. They're always gonna turn away after they've eaten. So once okay. they've made that turn, that's when you're gonna wanna drive in okay. and making sure you're making a really solid strip set, yeah. good connection there. Do um, you throw multiple big strip sets in? Are you It depends how school? they catch you. So like yeah. if I'm here and suddenly eats, I only have this much yeah. strip set. I'm definitely gonna come back through and either hold my rod and do this or yeah. maybe give it another big yank, absolutely. Yeah. That being said, if that's happening as he's going away, it's pretty hard to manage how much tension you've given, but right. definitely keep driving that hook in until yeah. you or your guy feels satisfied with your hook placement. So listen to the guy. Again, as always, always. listen to the guy. Do you keep that rod low? Are you putting it above your head like a trout? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, typically fitting, fishing heavier rods for them, right? Yeah. So has a finding butt, 
Keep your rod nice and low. As you're fighting him, never bring your rod up away from uh, your body. Place that fighting butt into yeah. yourself because that's what it's made to do. Right. And be hard as you can on that fish. Yeah. The more you rest, the more he rests. So right. if, if you, you let out because you're just so tired, well, guess what? He's recharging his batteries and he's going to school you. So <laughs> definitely keeping rod low, rod angles low, and just keep that pressure on him. Yeah. And then as it gets close to the boat, it, it's really up to the guy how he wants to coach you, whether you're bringing your line over the back of him or gotcha. whatever it may be. Gotcha. Uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about rigging in, in some of the next slides, but yeah, that's fly number three. Everglades gurgler. Fly number four is the Black Death. This is the black and red variety. Uh, should mention a lot of these flies come in blurple as well. Yep. We just happened to sell out of all of them because we had a big group of people <laughs> going down to Belize, and I sold them all blurple because I'm a big fan. But Black Death. Red and black is also a popular color scheme. Where does, where does this uh, pattern originate? Why do you uh, recommend having it in a target anglers box? So this is uh, by Bob LeMay, a uh, long time tire for us. And yeah, this is kind of your classic cockroach style. So you got your hackle fibers kind of splayed out in the back. Uh, this is kind of the original style tarpon fly, also tied back uh, on right. the hook shank. So, What's um, the purpose of that? I saw that with the topless and also the, with the black tip. Is that a... That, what purpose is There's serve? interesting theories behind it. Um, it, it just kind of eliminates uh, going super deep into the fish is my guess. It Does it kind of, also, yeah, you might protect your leader material as correct. well? Correct, yeah. So you're, you're essentially, that fish is not going to chow this before it gets to the hook. It's going right. to chow and hopefully Sit right. on the outside now. That's a very perfect world. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hard to control a vacuum. Yeah. They, they really suck it in. But yeah, so it's going to have actually a pretty thin profile uh, once it's wet. It's going to have lots of movement. Um, definitely a great fly again for those early morning situations or maybe bigger water situations gotcha. where you need that darker contrast. Uh, like if you're throwing a sinking line or something like that through an intermediate. For sure, yeah. I know, like down in Belize and stuff, they love these flies when they're fishing those rolling fish coming yeah. out of the channels, things like that. Cool. Um, so we talked a little bit about protecting your leader. What? I mean, I, I would assume it, it it depends on the fishery. Uh, what's your leader setup look like? Let's say for the Keys versus Belize versus Mexico. You yeah. don't have to do all of them, but you know, how's how do you see change there? Um, yeah, there's a couple trains of thought here. A lot of guys are still sticking to kind of your classic give me twist style leaders that closely follow IGFA rules. And yeah. uh, it's a little more fair, if you will. Um, having that lighter braking strength built in cheerleader is quite nice to you've tired a fish out for so long he's still not coming in you have the option of popping right. him off yeah. uh, kind of the new age you know nickname is homeboy leader You're just pretty much straight for carbon gets the job done absolutely it's just less uh kind in, in the right. situation where you just cannot get that fish in. right so uh, kind of one of the classic things the i've homeboy. seen is someone breaks their rod uh middle of the fight and now they've got to fight this fish like this hand lining it would have been nice to just yeah. be able to pop them off and then yeah, yeah. Deal's done. But yeah, so, you know, real clear water situations, highly pressured fish, you're going to have lighter tippet scales. On that you're answer. doing to to the fly, what would you do in that situation? The 40? Yeah, 40, 50, 60, somewhere yeah. in there. Um, and then for the bigger fish, you're doing like 80? Or the same 80, resume? yeah, like, you know, I would fish 80 for sure if I felt confident that they weren't leader shy. Gotcha. Um, I would approach the day probably with heavier, and then as I saw fit, if fish were denying me, that, that would be one of the changes I make. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Fly number four, the Black Death. Fly number five is the Megalopsical in a orange creamsicle colorway. <laughs> yes. One of the tarpon's favorite flavors of ice cream, actually. Another reason I like tarpon. The mega obstacle <laughs> in uh, orange and tan. Yes. What, uh, what, where, where do you like to fish this? How do you like to fish this? What purpose does it serve other than catching tarpon? So this is another Dave student fly. Um, 
great for laid up fish as we are just starting to come closer to the migration these colder months. Uh, fish will often pull into the bad country, lay up muddy bottomed areas just to hopefully warm up, but they're essentially dormant. So what's nice about this fly is it features a deer hair head. So as you present to a laid up fish, it's now gonna stay in that zone uh, before he gives you the tail twitch and really excites on your fly before yeah. sinking too quickly. So nice that it has that slow sink. Um, also gonna feature a weed guard. So uh, often you're running into floating grass, seaweed, things like that. It's just gonna keep you fishing a little bit longer, hopefully. Cool. Lit ups are really cool. They're exciting. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, we're talking about the hula hoop. Mm -hmm. Uh, hula hoop on a lead up tournament, what's, what's that look like? Oh, it's fairly close, yeah. It's, yeah. it's If it's truly still dormant laid up fish, sometimes it's as close as like 20 inches, 24 inches. Like it's pretty close. So you've got to essentially wake him up. Uh, yeah, it's gonna snap be a, him out of it. Yeah, but too loud, he's gonna spook. Uh, it's got to land just right and stay in the zone. This land's pretty soft. Correct. Would be my imagination. Yes. Um, so, Laid up tarpon hula hoop is pretty small. Yep. For uh, rolling tarpon, are you leading them in like your hula hoops like massive? <laughs> That's a good question. Or uh, are you throwing it uh, so throwing a dime? Depending on clarity and kind of how you see them roll. So blades, for example, you'll see a fish roll and then he's in the just black water yeah. essentially you can't see but you're, you're now tracking a bubble or two that's going to come up so often they roll and then you see some bubbles come up and you are going to lead pretty close to those bubbles uh because that's going to tell you the direction he's moving so yeah. um that's typically more of a sinking fly with those deep rollers yeah. uh, in clear water if you see a fish roll or cruise uh you're going to give him a longer lead because yeah. he, he can see pretty well do you use any bigger flies for those like deeper water, like like the ones in Belize that we that you've been you, we've both been to. You use a bigger fly for that stuff. Would you use like a big deceiver at all, or mm -hmm. you pretty much throw in like I I still kind of stay in that same size, a couple yeah. inches long. Um, yeah. yeah, it's more about them you casting in the right place, and they're, they're going to see it. They have a giant eye. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty good compliment. Yeah, Tarpon, you have a huge eye. <laughs> what a beautiful eyes you have, Tarpon. Isn't that what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, that's like a. Never mind. Don't worry about that, guys. Don't worry about my stupid thoughts. Anyway, that was the Five Flies for Tarpon. Again, as always, big thanks for to Alec for stopping by. Can't uh, thank him enough for coming by for the last four special editions of Five Flies. Thanks for having me. If you. Uh, if you need knowledge on saltwater fishing and Alec is in your area, uh, you should, if he's ever doing a presentation, you should go to it. <laughs> Learn a lot. Thanks, Yvonne. Yeah, it's true. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you, Alec. <laughs> it's, really, it's really impressive the amount of stuff you know about saltwater fishing. So, if you have missed the previous episodes, those are gonna be available in the description. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. I feel like an idiot saying that, but it does actually help the channel out. So appreciate that, uh, appreciate your support. And uh, we'll see you in the next edition of whatever we have cooking up in the future. So uh, big thanks to Alec, thanks to Umqua. We'll catch you in the next one.